Welcome back to the wizard shop. Weather's getting kind of warm out. We're gonna go over some AC tips right after this. So you're cruising along in your car and it's a really warm day. Your AC starts blowing warm. We're gonna go over some quick tips that you can go through before you take it to a shop and kind of get an idea of what's going on. What could be wrong with your AC system and it may be something that you can fix at home. So when your AC quits, there are multiple, multiple reasons of why it quit. Things that can cause it to stop. Could be that it's low on refrigerant. Could be the compressor clutch has failed electrically or mechanically. It could be the compressor's locked up. It could be that your HVAC module or the system that controls it has a fault or something's wrong. It could be a pressure sensor that's on the AC system. It could be a multitude of things. But I'm gonna show you some tips here in a minute that can really narrow it down to a few things. Today we're gonna to use this little Honda Element and show you some tips and tricks. And we also got a couple compressors on the cart. I wanna show you a scenario that we had in the shop. The first thing I'm going to do is turn on the ignition. I want to show you guys something. So your AC compressor has stopped running. Electrically, we're going to find out why. The only reason a compressor stops compressing is that there's a power issue with the clutch or it's locked up and ruined. But we're going to start with the electrical portion of it today. The first thing you want to do is in your owner's manual or look online or Google it and find out where is the AC compressor relay. On this Honda, you can see the little snowflake right there, which indicates right here. That's the compressor relay. We're going to remove that. And I'm going to get a test light set up. Let me grab it for you. Hook the alligator clip in to ground. I want to, before we get started any further, always verify that your test light works because it could totally throw you out of kilter really fast. So let's do that. Yep, it's good. Not a blown bulb or anything. So in this relay socket here, that would be power coming from a fuse. This is power going to the compressor right here. Power coming from a fuse, power going to the compressor. These are the control portions right here. Here's the relay socket. We have power coming from here and it goes through the relay and it goes through this pin to the compressor. I've got this hooked up to power and we can see that the compressor is good. But we're gonna prove that here in a minute. What we're trying to prove right here is that inside the dash, the system that controls the AC is not faulty. Once we can get past that, we can completely forget about the inside, the interior of the car and focus on the engine bay. So I'm putting the test light into this pin right here. This is where the computer will ground the relay to turn on the clutch on the compressor. Right now it's not on. So I'm going to start the engine and I'm going to turn on the AC button on the dash. Okay, so it lights up the light. That tells us one thing. We have no trouble in the interior with the controls, the climate control system, the buttons. There's nothing going on, no codes in the module. It wants to turn on the AC. So now we can focus on the engine bay. Let's prove whether or not there's power actually getting to the compressor. And the way I'm going to do that is my handy dandy relay switch, as you guys have seen in the past. They're actually on my Amazon affiliates page if you click the description below. This takes place of the standard Honda relay and I control turning it on and off. So let's plug this in. And now we're going to listen. You're going to hear the clutch click back and forth. So now we know there's no broken wires, there's no bad grounds, and there's no burned up clutch coil on the compressor. Otherwise, it wouldn't engage. So we have power coming from the dash to turn on the relay, which means we're good inside the, the dash, and we can get power to the compressor and the clutch works. So it'd be very likely that this system might be low on Freon. It's not, this, there's nothing wrong with this AC. I'm just using it as demonstration. The next thing you wanna do 
I want to show you a little tip is with the with the refrigerant. The next thing we're going to do is take off the caps off of our refrigerant service ports. When servicing an AC system, whether it be for a house or for a car, the EPA says a de minimis amount of Freon or refrigerant is allowed to escape into the air. That means a tiny little bit. It does, doesn't mean you go spraying it all over the place. The tip I'm going to show you is we're just going to take a small screwdriver and push the Schrader valve inside the service port. That's it. That's all you do. We know there's Freon in there. If you push the little service valve and nothing happens, then you know you're out of, you're out of refrigerant. There's a leak somewhere or something's happened and you're completely out of refrigerant. It can be just low enough that it's not enough to turn on the pressure switch, which is right here. There's a little switch. It's actually mounted on the, the AC line right there, the hard line. In the old days, you could just take a paper clip and bypass that and prove whether it's bad or not. But on today's cars, you cannot do that. They're actually very delicate sensors that sense to the PSI how much pressure is there. They're not just on and off. So you don't want to jump the pins on a modern AC system. It's not a good idea. If it's just a little bit low on refrigerant, there's no way for you at home to know accurately how much is in the system, how much does it need. I can guarantee you, especially Hondas, are extremely picky about how much refrigerant they have. If it's an ounce too much or an ounce too little, it can make it not run at all. This is my Matco AC machine. I think it's made by Robin Air. I'm not sure who makes this for them. But these are about four or five thousand dollars. This is not something you're going to just buy to work in your garage or this is what a professional buys. There's many times that people bring me a vehicle and say, well, I bought a few cans of Freon at Walmart and it's still not working. Well, it's probably because it was two ounces low or three ounces low enough to trigger the pressure switch and shut off the AC. Now you, instead of adding the, the two or three ounces it needed, you've added 16 ounces. Now it's too much and it goes too high and the pressure shuts off again. With today's cars, you, you really can't just buy a can at Walmart and fill it up. You really need to take it to a shop. The method that I will use is connect this machine to the vehicle and evacuate all the refrigerant out and it weighs it. There's a scale inside of here. It'll tell me exactly what's in the system and I can tell you how low it is. What you do is you refill it back to full capacity and you're back in business. That's not something you can guess and you can't guess that with a can that you buy at a store. So. That is the refrigerant portion of what can cause your AC to quit working. If you're going down the road and it goes kind of cool, then it gets cold, and then it's warm and back and forth, that's a sign that it's just a little bit low, just enough to start triggering the pressure switch. I have two compressors on a little cart here. I want to show you guys something and talk about a scenario that we actually had in the shop today. But what we've decided on this car is that there's power coming from the, from the dash to turn on the AC. And we prove that we can get power to the compressor. There's not an issue with electricity. It'd be a, you could look at refrigerant or you could look at some other issue. Another thing you might want to do is find your AC compressor and manually turn the nose of it and see if it's not locked up. And we're going to show you guys that right as we move over to this cart. So here we have a good working AC compressor that actually came from Hoovy's Apollo 911. This is the original Porsche AC compressor. We're going to use it to show you guys how the clutch works. And then here is a bad one. As your AC compressor is situated on your car, you don't want to turn the pulley. That turns freely. That's the center portion that you want to turn. It should spin with a little resistance because there's refrigerant in there under pressure. It should be kind of tight to turn, but you should be able to turn it. If you get under your car and you turn it and it's just uh, uh, and it's locked up, your compressor is shot. And in that scenario, it's going to require new condenser, new compressor, receiver dryer, and flush the entire system. If you do not replace all those components in that order, they won't even cover the warranty on the new parts you're putting on your car. You have to do that. New condensers, 
you get small debris inside of them. They're so small these days, you can't flush it out. So you put a new compressor on and call it good, and a small piece of debris breaks loose from the condenser and floats around in the system and finally makes its way to your brand new compressor and scores it up and destroys it. And if you call a warranty or try to claim warranty on your compressor, they're going to say, well, did you can replace the condenser and flush the system and replace the receiver dryer? Uh, no, I didn't I really have enough money to do that. I didn't do those things. They're going to say, your warranty's void. Now here we have a compressor that mechanically is fine. It, it would actually pump and work, except for the fact electrically it has failed. The compressor coil inside of here is dead. It's actually a customer we had today. We had it in the shop. I proved that that was the problem using the steps I just showed you. And I knew without a doubt this compressor is the problem. And he didn't believe me. He thought that I didn't know what I was talking about. He called several times and was pretty upset. I almost wanted to pull the work out of here because he thought I didn't know what I was doing. But we're going to prove here that I do know what it's doing. We've got the new compressor on now and it works beautiful. An ice cold AC. So I know that was the problem. But let me show you guys electrically what's supposed to happen and what can happen on one that's failed. So you guys aren't going to see my face, but I want you to focus on the compressors, not my face. I've got wiring hooked up to the good compressor, ground, and the power wire. I'm going to apply battery voltage, and you're going to see this move in and out and make a noise. Whenever you turn on the AC on your car, if everything's in, in good order, your refrigerant's at the right level, and there's no issues, all it does is apply voltage like this, and it locks in place this pulley that, see it spins free right now. I'll show you, I'll get it going pretty good, spinning. Watch what happens when I engage it. It stops. Now the whole thing turns as one unit. And when you want to turn off your AC, now it spins free. That's how an AC compressor works, is how it disengages and engages from the serpentine belt. This one works good. We just saw that it works. Now let's try the bad one. Special wiring hooked into the pins here. Hey, Car Wizard, hmm? aren't those those test leads that you have on your affiliate page? Yes. I have an entire kit of test leads that have all the different styles of pins that you can hook right into a connector without damaging pins. So now I've got power and ground hooked up here directly into the connector and we're going to put straight voltage to it and nothing happens. That's because the magnetic coil that's energized inside of here is short circuited or cut or failed or just burned up from age. Is that something that they can test while it's still in the car? Yeah, we just did that actually on this Honda. We checked at the relay, we put power to the compressor. From that relay, it goes right here to these wires. That's why we heard it click back and forth when we did my little manual relay. We proved that it clicks on the clutch, it works. We can also prove, is the computer telling it to turn on? And we did prove that with the test light. If you turn on your AC and your test light does not light up, it's either low on refrigerant or there's a code, a fault code, or something's wrong inside the dash. Hey, Car Wizard, how likely is it for the fuse to be blown? It could be a fuse. You might want to check your AC fuse for the compressor. It could be what's wrong as well, why you're not getting power. But if you're getting power, then you know the fuse is good. And then also we checked on the relay. We put, like I said, put power to the compressor and it clicked on and off. So you would know from the dash all the way to the compressor, there's no problem. So I've had many customers, like I just mentioned a minute ago, bring me a vehicle and say my compressor's locked up. And they, we put it on the lift, we confirm that that is the case, and I quote them $1,700 for a complete AC system. And they're like, well, I just need the compressor. And like I just mentioned a minute ago, when these go bad and lock up, the center portion doesn't turn anymore. It sends pieces of metal through all those lines inside your dash up front by the radiator is full of metal particles. If you put just a new compressor on, all those particles go right into your new compressor and just shreds it to pieces. 
and you'll have another locked up compressor again. I have actually experienced a customer who put on his own compressor and he said, I've been through three of these things. They're making bad compressors. They're sending me junk. It is possible you get a bad compressor, not three times in a row. I finally got his vehicle in and pulled one of the lines off and it was like spray paint, like glitter. It was just metal all in the lines. Three compressors he burned up because he didn't clean out his system. Your receiver dryer has a desiccant filter inside of it. It will also be completely plugged and full of particles inside of that. On some cars, it looks like a big metal can, and here's a picture of one right here. But like on this Honda, it's actually part of the condenser. It's a little tube shape that's on the side of the condenser. It's just like a sock inside of there, a desiccant packet. You would replace that with a condenser anyway, so you get a new one. But if your compressor ever locks up and you take it to a reputable shop, prepare for a big shop bill if you want it done right. So when these issues arise, it never fails that it's 105 degrees outside and it's always at the most inopportune time and at a time that it's not planned for as far as finances wise. It always happens that way. It's, it stinks. It really does. I hate that for people when it happens. It's like, oh no, this is not good. I wanted to show you guys a few tips if your AC starts blowing warm on you. There's a few little things you can run through and kind of get an idea of what's going on. Just like the scenario on the co bad compressor I showed you, all it is is a clutch. It's not mechanically failed, so I feel confident that I can just put a new compressor on and as the results have shown, it fixed this problem. In shops today, you can get into trouble if it's just a small electrical problem. They will still quote you the entire AC system. $1,600, $1,700, and all it was is a $200, $300 compressor. One last thing before we close out I wanted to say is some people say, why can't you just replace the clutch on the compressor? And you can, but we have to remove the compressor off the vehicle anyways, and that by the time you pay for the clutch and the labor for a shop to pull all that off and put it back on, you're usually at the cost of a new compressor. It doesn't make sense. It's not financially feasible. It makes more sense just to get a complete new compressor. Now, Car Wizard, some people might just say, hey, forget it. I don't really want to have air AC. I can live without it. I mean, I lived without it as a kid in our car, you know, our Volvos with no AC, just windows down. But is that actually a good idea? If that's what you want to do, it's not going to hurt the car any. In the middle of summer, it's not going to be a problem. It's not a big deal. But in the winter, your defrost may not work as good because it's not pulling the moisture out of the air. Even in the middle of winter, your AC compressor runs to run your defrost to dry the air. So it may have an issue there. It won't be too bad, but you might want to get it fixed for that reason alone. But depending on where you live, that actually could be a really big problem. I know we use it here in Kansas a lot in the winter, unfortunately. Yeah. Nice shirt, Mrs. Wizard. Hey, thanks. I designed a new one. I thought you guys might like it. You know who? The boss is really uh -huh. hey, the new shirt link down below. Look in the description, guys. Right. So anyways, I thought I'd show you guys some tips that you could look at your own AC issues and maybe fix it yourself. Maybe it's a bad relay. Maybe it's a fuse. And you can be back in business and AC running again. So any of the tools I've used here, especially the relay switches, check my Amazon affiliates link below. If you haven't hit the subscribe button already, do that now. We've got many more cool, informative videos to come. Thanks for watching. Thank you.